All right, we are live here. All right, 10 seconds, we're live on here. Okay. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us here on Facebook Live, another great show. Stay tuned for a few minutes. Start sharing this on your feed to all your family friends. Welcome to Take Back Your Health. Your hosts are Dr. Sunil Pai and Maureen Sutton, who will explain the shocking truths about health care, prescription drugs, food and supplement industries. They will help guide you to take back your power and feel great again. Now, here's Dr. Sunil Pai and Maureen Sutton. Welcome, everybody. Today is going to be an, another exciting show here with Take Back Your Health with myself, Dr. Sunil Pai, and my wonderful co-host, Maureen Sutton. All right. And today we're going to talk about something that most people don't think about, but it's the impact of what we eat on the environment. Uh, a lot of people know about climate change, or in this administration, we only can say weather difficulties because so it's now illegal federally, I think, to say the word climate change. But since I'm not a federal employee, I'm going to explain you know, what the dangers of climate change are. And we really want to focus on the show today is the importance of how simple, easy, economical lifestyle changes and dietary changes can affect not only your health, but the environment, the planet for many generations to come. OK, you don't have to be a, a rich billionaire. You don't have to have expensive, you know, solar uh, electric cars and stuff like that. You will have to look at making better food, food choices. And these food choices will also have a profound impact on many, many people around you. Now, I just want to read uh, real quick uh, some some impacts what's happening in 2017. That's the last data set that we have on the state of the global climate. What's happening now? Number one, ocean acidification is continuing. Okay. That means the ocean is becoming more acidic. We know, like, remember, just like our body, we want to keep our body in more of a healthy, balanced pH state. Like when you get into a pool, you want it to be more balanced, right? 7.2, 7.5. You don't want to be very acidic because things don't grow. Things don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, get really bad and we have more inflammation. For the example. ocean is like 8.2 and it's slowly moving more acid. Right. The Arctic and the Antarctic sea ice is below average. So that means that they're melting. And they're, the consequent is that the sea levels are rising. So as we see all these coastal places are slowly, you know, as we noticed recently with a lot of the um, hurricanes and a lot of the flooding, it's just, it's coming more inland places that we never really thought before. And there's various islands in the tropics in particular that are slowly, slowly going underwater. Right. And so all these beautiful places that you see, like on uh, these travel shows, you know, these little huts out there, they're actually now just pretty much floating. And so we have to be careful of that. And even people have beachfront property. You know, all this is being affected on all coasts and all around the world. Yeah. Last time we went to San Diego and we were walking the beaches, we were surprised how many of the homes had actually slid off the cliff. And there was not much uh, beach actually left. So we were surprised the places we used to be able to walk up the sand and go, you know, as far as you could see. But because of the changes. Yeah, most of the places were just right up to the right up to the cliff wall. Yeah. Right. So so much for those million dollar homes. Uh, greenhouse gases continue to rise concentrations. Uh, last year, 2017 was the warmest non El Nino year. And from 2011 to 2017 was the warmest five years on record. We had hurricanes. We had floods, we had fires, heat waves, and droughts. And a scary thing is that this year now has been projected by all these different health organizations to be the largest tick-borne year on record, meaning Lyme's disease, Lyme's-like disease, mosquito-borne illnesses like malaria and Zika and, and, and dengue fevers and all these things because as the climate gets warmer, Right. What's happening is that the tropics are coming towards us. So the, the season, you know, I think Bill Maher said on the show the other day, like, oh, there used to be this natural pesticide called winter. You know, oh, there, wow. there, was, there were seasons that things would come and grow. Right. And, you know, all these bugs and insects have a purpose, but they also have a life cycle. Now that this 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 climate has changed, then what happens is these seasons are longer. That means more and more of us are getting exposure. And some of these diseases like Lyme disease, which will have an episode in the future. It's just it's terrible. Uh, we don't have a uh, we don't have a, a, a an adequate treatment. There's millions of people that are actually inappropriately and misdiagnosed with those kind of conditions. So there's secondary and tertiary diseases that come with it. So you may start to make some progress on the actual disease itself, but then there's the secondary and and tertiary diseases that you have to work with. That's right. 
Very difficult. Right. So for the planet and for ourselves, what we're going to talk about today is biodiversity. And what that means is that the planet is made of billions and billions of different types of ecological beings, right? So it's not just humans and, and cows and pigs and sheep and goats and then, and then dogs and cats, but we also have plants, we have fungi, we have even other kind of uh, proteins, they call them, that these are all these different, like algae. There's so many different things in the ecosystem that are important, but they all serve a purpose to keep everything in check. And when there's imbalances, unfortunately, right now, the biggest threat to biodiversity is over-exploitation like over fish, like fishing industries, for example, deforestation, for example, and the agriculture industry, which we really want to talk about. And when we look at like, for example, federal dollars, what we spend, our federal dollars is 61% of our federal dollars go to animal product production. Okay. And less than 1% of our federal budget goes to fruits and vegetables. Okay. So this tells us where we're at. Um, now in agriculture growing, there's only 2% of land that has actually been dedicated for use of vegetables and fruits. And all we need, and this all this data is in my book, an Inflammation Nation. You can get it at an inflammationnation.com. Um, $90 million is what they're projecting in each kind of local um, agricultural economy. So just short, short, small amounts, $90 million has an impact, you know, that can grow and, and feed people. And not only that, it'll produce about 189,000 jobs nationally, which is a lot more jobs than, you know, any other industry right now currently. And it produces about $9.5 billion in direct sales of healthy foods. Yet, you know, when we look at corn, which we'll talk about later on the show, and soy, all these things are made not for human consumption, but for animal production and animal consumption is that there's $5 billion a year, $5 billion a year that go into subsidies that feed these uh, productions. And unfortunately, that affects our carbon footprint. So one thing I want everybody to look at is you want to go to something called footprintnetwork.org. And you want to look at something what they call is what is our footprint? What is our global footprint? Right now, food takes up about 26% of our ecological footprint. So that means producing food takes this much energy and carbon footprint in our world. Now, there is something called... Um, they call it the ecological overshoot. Okay. This and is very interesting. Very interesting. And, I, and, and, and there was a great speaker, uh, Miss Hawkins, that was at the Peapod conference. She covered all this information. So I want to thank her for, I'm, get, I'm taking some of the information from her presentation. I'll probably try to have her as a guest in a future show. We can talk about this specifically. But what it is, is, is calculating the amount of usage of, of uh, resources that the planet uses per year. And it used to be like in 1970, we used like one year, we used one planet of resources that we could replenish, right? And as time goes on, we're actually using, we're debting more than we can replenish, okay? We're ecological debtor. And so what that means is that we're just, we're consuming more than the earth can recreate or we can actually help the earth recreate. So August 1st of 2018 is actually the overshoot day this year. And every year it keeps getting shorter and shorter, meaning earlier to January. And um, when you look at that, what we're trying to do is how do we reduce our carbon footprint? And today, everything we're going to talk to you about eating more fruits and vegetable plants, eating more local, eating more nor or organic, non-GMO foods, um, less factory farmed foods, the better. You know, when we look at the ins insufficiency of food production, even China now is going to reduce their meat consumption by 50% by 2030. So, the, so these are other uh, countries that are looking at the global impact of how much we are, they are consuming and how, remember, we're in one of the top three CO2 production, uh, production countries in the world. Uh, and then India and China are, are coming right behind us now due to their expansion of the economies and growth. And what so, really bothers me is the food waste. You know, in the U.S., there's an estimated 40 percent of our food goes to waste. So 40%. So that's like, ha take your plate, cut it almost in half and just toss that out breakfast, lunch and dinner. That's what we're doing every day. And then, you know, certain places like when people go to buffets, right, we just take a bite of this, take a bite of that. and We just throw it away. All you can eat buffet, fill up your plate, take a bite. Yeah, I don't like it. Throw it away. And animal and fruits and vegetables, they have sacrificed their lives for you to be nourished. That is such a waste. It's terrible. So, so right now, uh, in terms of our ecological footprint and our overshoot, we are at 1.7 planets, meaning that currently right now we are using 1.7 times the amount that we can actually re 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 reproduce and restore. 
Okay, so this is not a good thing, everybody, because as time goes on, as we're getting close to double, that means we're just consuming, consuming, and there's nothing to replenish that. Hey, so, uh, Sunil, uh, hi, we have Theo on the line. All right, let's see if we can get Theo on the line. Go ahead. We have, okay. Hey, Dr. Pai and Maureen. Hey, hey Theo, how are you doing? Everyone, this is Theo okay. Hansen, the wonderful, uh, the Vita Protocol Specialist, our food as medicine expert that we love to have here. How are you doing today? I'm good, and you're you're like you're you're hitting the topic that is uh, closest uh, and nearest to my heart. So I thought I'd call in yeah. and uh, and share a little if there was a chance for any space in it about the impact that that confined animal farming and our decisions for our food chain have on the planet. Sure, go ahead. Please. Well, first of all, thank you guys for being willing to do the show and and even talk about these things that are uncomfortable because so much is out of sight. And so, so many of us as human beings, if we can't see it, we don't think about it. And then we have a hard time believing it's true. Um, but Matt, what I, I was putting together a couple of thoughts as you were, as the show started, and I thought I, I should definitely share just the amount of poop production that happens on the planet because of confined animal farming. Oh, so, right. So an animal poop and human poop, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. But just, just the impact um, on poop alone is that dairy cows contribute over 2 billion pounds of manure nitrogen and well over half a billion pounds of actual manure that we can't use. We can't put it in enough agriculture. We don't need it. And so it's literally one of the heaviest poisons on the planet is this, uh, this, this fact that we have this urine and feces. I mean, if a pig produces uh, close to 1,700 pounds or 170 pounds rather a day of waste. And, and again, we don't need any of those. The, the truth is we don't have what to confine do they do with those? in order for us to thrive as a species on this planet. Right. And, and they put all of that into these big, enormous lagoons and then spray that stuff out on the fields. It gets into our streams, our oceans, and even the air. And so we have all kinds of uh, airborne diseases from this. So, yeah, when we talk about the CAFOs, right, and uh, all these feedlots, which we can't take photos of now, it's illegal in many states, so you can't even fly a drone over to see. But the, the environmental impact is not only dangerous, but we talked about in the last two shows about foodborne illness and on the rise. And right, right, one, so, you know, one out of four people will get sick every year from foodborne illness of the, not only the direct contamination, but also the secondary contamination from feedlots that are coming above, say, a farm that just is growing some romaine lettuce or some spinach or something like that. So, yeah, what else do you have to say, uh, Theo, about any other interesting factoids before we go to the next break? <laughs> well, as you know, I, I am, I am a, a repository of near endless, but I'll give you a couple of hotties that I thought were super important that everyone should know is that, first of all, salmon outbreaks, because we're talking about diseases now, salmon outbreaks are always traced back to CAFO chicken. I mean, we're, it's 90, 95, 99% of the time uh, in, in, in society outbreaks, you're always going to be able to trace, trace it right back to chickens and CAFOs, always. And then you look at like pig farmers, for example, we have an epidemic that nobody's talking about. This is a shocker. If you're ready for it, one in five pig farmers has methicillin-resistant MRSA, and that, those MRSA infections now kill more Americans than AIDS does each year in this country. Wow. Yeah. And for the, re the listeners, the MRSA is methicillin resistant staph aureus. So this is like the kind of super bugs that you get and we run out of antibiotics. And in fact, you know, there was one case of super bug illness just last year, a lady coming in Las, Las Vegas uh, and uh, they gave her a CDC flu and gave her 20 types of antibiotics. She ended up dying. So this is something that is going to start populating. And it's all coming from this overproduction, stress on the environment, stress on the animals, just un 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 ungodly use of antibiotics, chemicals, and waste, actually, just for a few companies and corporations to make money. Theo, I wanted you to hold on. Uh, we'll be right back after this commercial break. But we want to definitely continue the discussion on how each of us can make a difference by what we eat on the environment. You're clear. All right, everybody on Facebook Live, how are you doing? Uh, this is Dr. Pai this, and Morning. wonderful Maureen Sutton. Say something. What? <laughs> uh, there you go. Um, and also, Theo will be on the line. So uh, everybody, uh, please share this feed. This is an important topic because, again, it is things that people don't like to talk about. It is uh, uh, listening to uh, where our food comes from. Uh, but just as much as we want to know where our iPhone and our 
cars are made and our Harley Davidsons are made now or whatever, we have to look at, well, what, what is our food and what is going into that food production? And we, we have some, sh some pretty impressive and shocking information that will encourage you all to make better choices and looking at shopping locally, eating more plant-based and um, helping the environment. And the sad thing is now all of our checks and balances and restrictions that were being put in place through the EPA, et cetera, et cetera, USDA, are all being taken away now. So now we, the people, must do our part. We must. Absolutely. And I think, I think some of these people uh, uh, in the administration now should be in a feedlot because they're doing so much destruction in the last year that uh, organizations, uh, scientists, environmentalists, even farmers have tried to protect. You know, you know a lot of times we want, to, we want to look at the farmers as a good American farmer, but they're now, it's just, it's factory farming. They're, they're, they're now just minions uh, being held in debt doing uh, different types of uh, farming practices that they didn't do or their grandparents didn't do. So even going back to sustainable agriculture now is almost impossible. It's very, very little, if that at all. What a terrible job to work in an abattoir or work on a feed lot and be responsible for animals uh, producing food for us. That would be a horrible job. Who's, who would do that? Well, somebody has to do the job. And unfortunately- Back in 20 seconds. Unfortunately, these, these uh, jobs are usually uh, done by immigrants and people undocumented because you know most places like in the dairy farms in Wisconsin, they can't get anybody who's local, who's a citizen to work in those. So they actually bus people in to do these, these horrible jobs. Here and we then go. if it's wrong, they ship them back. It's just really un, 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 inhumane. You are tuned in to Take Back Your Health. To reach our program today, call 1-866-472-5792. That's 1-866-472-5792 or by email to radio at sanjevni.net. That's radio at sanjevani.net. Now, let's return to Take Back Your Health. We're back talking about food impact and the environment. I want to throw out some statistics before we get Theo back on the phone, but here's one thing that, you know, it was in my book and it was always encouraging me. Uh, most of us who want to go green, uh, you know, ever since, you know, I remember in college, Earth Day 1990, and it was a big deal. And now still, I feel like nothing's really have changed since then. But we're always looking at, you know, hybrid cars, electric cars. But here's the thing, you know, eating one pound of less hamburger is equivalent to the same emissions of driving your car for three weeks. Wait, okay. say that again. I so eating know. one pound of less hamburger meat. Okay. So, you know, a lot of people have like, say a uh, two quarter pounders, right? So, so then you have, so two, twice a week, people are having two burgers each. Okay. Yeah. So that is equivalent in terms of the CO2 emissions of driving your car for three weeks. Oh. So, so you don't have to buy an expensive Tesla, although it would be nice <laughs> and you don't have to have a, you know, a Prius or something like this. What you can do is just say, Hey, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat veggie burgers. Just, just cut out the regular burger and you'll be doing so much to the environment just on that simple thing. Not only for your heart, not only for inflammation, everything else we're going to talk about, but those are simple things that people, again, you don't have to buy a 40,000, 60,000, $80,000, you know, green car, just start eating some more green food. And okay. This is how we came up with meatless Mondays, just Meat, one day, meatless one day, just, you know, and then, then go to Tuesdays and go to, you know, certain countries <laughs> like uh, Germany, I think is doing now two or three days where they're pushing people to eat less because the, the social impact on the culture in terms of healthcare and resources, sustainability is, is, is profound. You know, the average household in the United States uses 98 gallons of water a day. Okay, the average household, 98 gallons of water. And industrial goods, like when we use clothes and paper and cotton, consumes about 44 gallons. So say about 140, 150 gallons a day. How, guess how much, Maureen, how much water is used for one pound of beef to grow one pound of beef? Oh, tell me. I know it's going to be. 1,800 gallons of water. Wow. For so, so we use about 140 gallons a day in a family with all our consumable goods and all the stuff like that. And to grow one pound of beef, it's 1,800 gallons of water. Okay, now when you look at like, what about like rice or soy or potatoes? 440 uh, gallons to grow a pound of rice, uh, 216 uh, gallons to grow a pound of soy, and the potatoes are 119 gallons. So you can see as you eat more plant-based, there's less consumption of our most precious uh, resource right now, which is water and air, right? 
and land. So you gotta wanna look at how do we conserve water is by eating less animal protein. And think about um, all of the side, you know, consequences of growing meat. So you have, you've got to grow their food first. So that takes up a lot of land. Um, and let's, let's talk about the lot of land, okay? Yeah. Because corn is the number one source of food, corn and soy, but corn first, that goes to the feedlot, right? And so a lot of us, we drive through mid, mid, middle America and we see cornfields, cornfields, and we're thinking like, wow, it's 4th of July coming up. I want some sweet, you know, sweet corn on the cob. But that's not growing corn that we eat. In fact, you know, the amount of corn that is eaten is very little. For every pound of real corn, like sweet corn on the cob that you can just – you know, take off the cob and roast it or cook it and eat it. Um, for every pound of that sweet corn that's edible, farmers grow 260 pounds of the other type of corn that is non edible. That's just what's grown for making ethanol fuels. And then now those are on all the other byproducts of that is going to feed animals in the feedlot. So the fiber, the, the protein, the, the, the fat, the rest of the, the kind of the, the pulpy part of it, that all goes. So there's tons and tons. Now, we all think of like corn syrup, right? High fructose corn syrup. Out of all the corn grown in America, how much of that, what percentage of that is growing for a corn syrup is for like soda pop? 3%, 3.5%, right? So, so, so we think, wow, how much soda fills an aisle of every store and every restaurant and everything, drinking sodas and sodas, sodas, corn syrup, corn syrup, corn syrup, but it's only 3.5%. So that means like 97% is all going to feed lots. Okay. But the high fructose corn syrup doesn't just go in the soda. If you walk into oh, it goes in breads and cookies and candies. It gets in everything. Yeah. Anything that's sweetened here. But just you know, just for mustard. It's put, in your mayonnaise. Right. It's in your crackers. It's in everything. Right. So but we think of that how much that is grown. It's only three and a half. So again, just to put it in proportion, how much more is given? Ninety million acres of corn is is what they're what they're we plant more than 90 million acres. And if we just switch that over to food that we could eat, you know, basically we could pretty much feed most of the world's population. You know, is it enough to feed 10 billion people in the United States? And scientists now say, absolutely. Yes. We could, you know, we don't have this, oh, there's too many people on the planet to feed. We're actually just feeding the wrong things. We're not feeding people. We're feeding animals that we want to consume. Okay, the Environmental Working Group, EWG, EWG.org, uh, please go and support them. But they find out and they can uh, publish all the data showing that 10 to 40 times more greenhouse gases emissions are given uh, when you grow beef and lamb. Okay, and the U.S. requires 167 million pounds of pesticides, 17 billion pounds of fertilizers across 149 million acres of cropland. OK, so again, if we just took all this grain that we're growing for the animal and we actually ate it, made it to consumable grains, we could feed, uh, you know, millions and millions and actually 800 million to almost the, the full planet. OK, so we're using all of those resources just to grow foods for the animals, then all of the waste products that have to be taken care of. Then many of the animals are being transported either to be produced or processed, excuse me, over into China and then brought back. And then also then they, everything has to be trucked across the U.S. So imagine. <laughs> so you got your pork in Ohio, right? They're growing it there, putting all this fertilizer and chemicals. Remember, 22 percent of the estimated 5.2 billion pounds of pesticides that are used worldwide. The United States account for 80 percent of the 5.2 billion pounds of pesticides and of those classes, herbicides, which are used commonly more in the United States on foods. So that gets eaten by the animal. Right. So now we have GMO crop, GMO soy, GMO corn and all these other things. Now we put on pesticides, herbicides to eat it. And then they, they have to ship that animal now to the, 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 the port. The port then has to go 7000 miles to China. They have to process in China. They're talking about the emissions because there's no emission standard in that country now. And then they ship it back put all the chemicals and other additives and, and whatever. No. And then it comes back here, comes back to the port then comes back to the facility where they have to package it. Right. And then that package of, the, of that animal product goes to different distributors because they have to put their label on different packaging, you know, at one pound, five pound, you know, ground, not ground, chuck, this, that, whatever. And then you got to go pick it up in your store. So you got to think of how much environmental emissions, gas, energy, electricity 
is done just for that burger, that grass-fed burger that people are like. Oh, I, what the discussion was? Uh, someone was saying, "I need my grass-fed burger, Doctor Pie. It has to be. It has to be." They were so adamant. It has to be grass-fed. I'm like, well, if it's so important for the animal, why aren't you eating your plants? If you're so into this paleo As concept, said, why don't you just cut out the middleman and eat the grass? Cut out the middleman. Why you know, do that, you have to eat the animal in order to get your grass? You know, all these people who are going you know, more paleo and keto are actually producing more harm to climate change. Like, aside the health, they can go listen to all the other episodes. We'll talk about that later. But again, you know, there's this huge waste of, 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 of resources, and we have to look at what can we do to stop that. Now, is Theo on the line? I am. I'm here. I'm joining right. the show. All right, Theo. So, so more, more topics because I want to get in a later show and the show about some recycling and some uh, food waste issues. But uh, any other aspects that you can chime in on the aspect of just – Sure. We're recycling plastic and giving it to cows as roughage because we don't feed them properly. How awesome is that that the oh. people are buying – these, these animal products that are actually fed plastic, what could possibly go wrong? I'm uh, talking about recycling. Sorry, that was probably a tongue in cheek recycling comment. But, um, I, you know, I think all, uh, well, that's one way to recycle. We'll give it to the cows. Give it to the cows. They poop it out. Now we have nanoparticles in the meat, you know, in the blood and all these other byproducts. By the way, you know, what, what's inside your hot dog? It's not the best part of the animal, it's the least part. It's the worst part of the animal. But um, what I thought was interesting was my own journey. You guys, it's been, a, you know, since 2014 was the last time I participated in a food system and even in a consumer system that, that uses exploitive uh, systems against it's so destructive on the planet. I do it for me. I do it for my brothers and sisters. If somebody else doesn't want to, I'm okay with that too. That's your own business. But in those years, I, I, I haven't shriveled up and died. My health has been the best that it's ever been. And I, I feel amazing. And I save a ton of money and I also don't get those, I'm not exposed to the same illnesses at the same level other people are. But I asked myself, what happened? And you guys, in you know, 1997, there were two and a half million dairy cows in the United States. And then 10 years later, there was, there was uh, twice that, 4.9 million. You know, what happened? And you go back and it's all engineered. You know, it was like milk, it, it does a body good. That's a lie. And then they went right into the got milk campaign because they couldn't keep saying that it does a body good because they got caught telling a lie. So now it's got milk. And then you look in, in, in the amount of disease that continues to burden this country, but look at how the number of animals expanded and then look what it takes to make that happen. And people forget that, you know, male cows come out of moms too. And what do they, what do we do with those and how do we treat that? And the whole waste that comes out of that, because we literally destroy that, that alive animal in the in very inhumane ways. We do the same thing with chicks. I mean, we, you look at, there's over a quarter of a billion male chickens are born as chicks that are thrown into grinders alive. And that comes out as a waste product. And that waste product is put into food systems. It's put into other products that are part of our, our lives. It's a little bit insane, but you said something that really triggered it was, you know, people think that, but yeah, but what are the farmers of America gonna, gonna do? But you're confused. Almost 80% of farmers in America have been displaced by CAFOs. They're no longer able to be in business and to be a farmer as part of the backbone of America or backbone of this country. They're not part of the system. They're being pushed out of that system. And I want to just uh, tell that the, the, the rate of farmers has risen tremendously over the last few years. Yeah. And, and a CAFO, just for the listeners, is concentrated animal feeding operations. Okay. A CAFO. So these are huge things. And if you look on Google, you look at uh, feed lots or photos of feed lots, you can see some of them that have been taken. Like these are huge. I mean, you'll be surprised how many acres and acres and miles and miles of feed lots in areas that you can't drive by your car. It's illegal to go and take pictures, but you'd be surprised what, uh, what kind of operations are happening. And then we're looking at like even the Amazon, how much are they cutting in the Amazon every day now for the animal production? to be exported here because of our consumption here, America being a large consumption of animal products here. So the deforestation every day, the largest deforestation right now in the Amazon is coming from animal production, just cutting, cutting the wonderful Amazon diversity, biodiversity, which will, will find medicines in the future or cures for most of the diseases from plants, right? Phytonutrients and other things like that. That's all being destroyed for someone wanting to have a stake over here in the United States. 
So um, when we come back after this break, I just want to make sure that we will end up covering some other topics of recycling and what you can do at home to actually now make a positive impact. And we'll also talk about other natural things that you can do to keep your body strong and our recommendations on what organizations that you might want to take a look at on the web to support as well. We'll be right back and uh, take a listen to our sponsors and thank them for allowing us to take back your health. Clear. All right, everybody on Facebook, we're here with Theo and Maureen. We're talking about food impact and the environment, uh, CO2 co emissions, uh, global climate change. And uh, it's a serious topic because a lot of people say, hey, uh, I, I want to be green. But then what they're eating is not, not like in line with what they're um, thinking or trying to do. So a lot of people are like, yeah, I try to recycle something, but I'm having a steak or I'm, I'm, I'm eating cheeseburgers a couple times a week. These are simple things that everybody can do to affect their self and the planet. Very simply, again, you don't have to be a super environmentalist. You don't have to be someone who's a mega green person just by eating and making better local choices, eating more plant-based whole foods. Uh, is better than eating any kind of factory farmed foods. Can I interrupt you for just one Please. The, uh, the, we are getting some comments on Facebook, and I can't read any of them. So I'd like to just have a quick look and see. All right. So um, everybody just uh, hold on. You know, we're going to talk about um, aspects where I, mean, I was at a conference. And we'll, we'll mention this on the air, but, you know, it was a, gr a zero waste conference and it was just a, a what a wonderful, unique idea. So I'd recommend everybody to uh, look next year is a great conference called Peapod, P-P-O-D uh, conference. Just Google that. Peapod conference. Please attend one of those things. It's very inexpensive for the public to go. Uh, doctors also get CMEs and healthcare providers all evidence-based, but one part of the conference was talking about the environmental impact of foods, which I, we were talking about today, and kind of sparked this discussion of what you can do yourself to yeah, help the planet. That's one of the most important things that we get across is what are the things that you can do at home, you know? Right, right. And I, I think, you know, eating, you know, going to a local market rather than, you know, buying things in season, you cannot put a price on that because everybody wants to have everything all the time. And, you know, everybody has to forget, like we used to eat in seasonally, like there was summer foods and winter foods and fall foods. And now it's like, you know, I want avocados all year. I want strawberries all the year. I want, you know, this all the time. And somewhere it's being shipped at some other part of the world just to get to the, the health store and I'll just go to a local farmer's market if you can. We actually have a co-op that drops off the food to our our office once a week. And it's a great thing to support local. It's not going far. And I'm not, I don't have to go to the grocery store. Coming back. All right, everybody, we're back here. You are tuned in to Take Back Your Health. To reach our program today, call 1-866-472-5792. That's 1-866-472-5792. Or by email to radio at sanjevni.net. That's radio at sanjevani.net. Now, let's return to Take Back Your Health. An interesting discussion here that we're talking about the environmental impacts of food uh, and how, you know, food choices changes our ecological footprint. Everybody can go to, you know, foodfootprint.network.org, uh, look at uh, the days, uh, how we can help. Uh, also, Environmental Working Group, ewg.org. Wonderful, you know, even National Resource Defense Councils. There's a lot of things, you know, PETA, uh, even, even World Wildlife Funds, all those things. Please support those organizations because they're trying to keep biodiversity, animals, pets, uh, from, from uh, in a humane society. All these things are great because we have to keep this planet for everyone uh, because we, we all can't go to Mars. Um, now, just going, we're talking about the, the CO2 deforestation, four-fifths, four-fifths of the deforestation in the Amazon is a, a due to cattle ranching. Wow. So everybody wants to like, I want to go to the Amazon. I want to learn about, you know, ayahuasca. I want to do this. I want to take an eco tour and see all this, you know, wonderful diversity of all these Jurassic type of insects and birds and plants. Four-fifths of that's being destroyed for cattle ranching. 
Right. And when you're also destroying the indigenous populations who hold amazing information and knowledge, ancient knowledge about how to survive. So one day when we need this information, <laughs> where are we going to get it from? Absolutely. And again, just reminding everyone, you know, aside of eating healthy, what we always recommend to, to uh, what I do for, for myself, Maureen, and our patients is we recommend everybody to take vitamin D, eat a plant-based diet, organic as much as possible. Uh, take a beta glucan called glucan 300 you can go to purebetaglucan.com that's purebetaglucan.com and learn more it's the strongest clinically available and clinically tested in vitro and in vivo dietary supplement on the market that you can have to help support your immune system functioning so you got to keep yourself strong but now going back to the topic of how do we keep the planet strong is i was just recently at a conference in this peapod conference that i was i was referencing in the last two or three shows about some of the health data and it was a zero waste conference. And what does that mean? That means they were looking at trying to go to zero waste at this conference. That everything should be recycled 100%. And I, it really didn't make sense to me. But when we were first invited, like, oh, bring your water bottle and bring some utensils. And I was like, wait, I'm going to a conference. Why am I bringing my stuff? Right. But when I got there, I brought it. And, idea. and it was a great idea. I, when you see like four or 500 doctors and, and healthcare providers and just p people in the public, you know, all day, you know, nine to five, in a, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then tea breaks, coffee breaks, and snack breaks, and all stuff. You see how much waste, how many coffee cups, how many plates and spoons, and, and we just throw it away. And then I think of the conferences that we go in Vegas every year, 6,000 doctors. I mean, oh. the amount of just trash is just unbelievable. And people say, oh, we're just throwing it away. But where is a way? And, you know, and that's right. the thing that people forget, like, where is a way? A way is going to be closer, closer than you think. A lot <laughs> of that's going to the oceans. And now we see that, you know, the, the garbage patch, right? Everybody knows the garbage patch. Just Google garbage patch in the ocean. Five trillion pieces of, you know, particles in the ocean in 20, that was 2014. It was 250,000 tons that was just floating. And now this microplastics, I even think Theo was mentioning it, but microplastics gets into the fish and the sea life. So there was a study that just came out, you know, because I was talking to some people on the East Coast and they were saying, oh, uh, what about, uh, you know, we love these like fresh oysters on the half shell, blah, blah, blah. They shuck them and they eat them at the bars and local city in Boston, all that stuff. Now there's 50 microplastic particles per oyster. Ugh, and not so, to mention what so, else is in yeah so so the average person eating the oyster now has eleven thousand particles that they have ingested just because those people commonly eat oysters fish is about sixteen thousand particles now what does that plastic contain bpa what has bpa been linked to cancer so it's not only a pro-inflammatory food no phytonutrients no fiber no antioxidants now we're having this whole aspect that there's a toxin that's actually in this animal protein that everybody's like oh i'm eating this you know buckets of of oysters or i'm getting my wild caught quote unquote wild caught and thinking uh salmon so we have to be, be be careful of what kind of foods we're eating and again everybody's throwing away food 40 percent. the u.s wastes 1400 calories of food daily per person oh. That's a lot of calories that we're just throwing away. Remember, somebody had to grow those plants. Someone had to grow that animal, and it was a sacrifice for what? Someone just throwing away? I, every time it makes us mad, we go to a restaurant, we'll see someone order something. They'll take a bite or two, and that's it. And you think of, like, what went into that process, yeah. right? So there's a little bit of loss of conscience because there's a lack of understanding of what the food is. So people say, I want to eat more paleo. I want to eat more of this. I want to have more bone broth. You know, and this explosion of this, where is this coming from? It's coming from factory farm K KFOs that are, this is the waste product that people are, are willing to pay an extra premium for of something that would normally be thrown away. Oh, yes, it's good for my collagen. It's great for my skin. <laughs> yeah, full of heavy metals, full of pesticides, herbicides, no, 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 no uh, fiber, no phytonutrients and no antioxidants. Thanks. Now, you know, one of the things that we're at this, at this conference was coffee cups. Right. Because we think of like most of us go to like a, a coffee house or, or you know, they go to these drive to these, you know, place like Starbucks stuff. Coffee cups per day. Seven million coffee cups are used per day. Two wow. and a half billion per year. But most of them, 90, 99 percent of them are not recyclable. 
because the what they put in that in that coffee cup, it's like a plastic liner um, to make it not leak, even though there is ones that you can get that are natural. They just want to pay for it. They want something that's white, that's bleached, that has all these things to have this look, this pristine look. But this is what we're throwing away. We can't. So just think of how many coffee cups that is. Just this coffee cup. You're not talking about the spoon, the stir, all the little things that we're doing, the well, plastic tops. The uh, K cups that you use to make oh, the coffee. God, the K yeah, cups. So there, there's just oceans yeah. of K cups. And I think the guy who invented the K cup is sorry that he invented it because of so much plastic waste. People just pop one in, throw it away, pop one in, throw it away. There is recyclable K cup cartridges that you can just grind your beans, put it in there and uh, you can use it and then you know, instantly push the button. You don't have to keep throwing away a little bit of piece of plastic. Think of how many billions in offices worldwide right now, right? Uh, people like to use that little, little machine. So we want to look at avoiding those kind of things. That's a really, really bad. Um, so what we want to do is like zero waste. So the idea is that when you go to a party or, or if you're having an event, uh, try to have people bring things. You know, uh, the biggest throwaway product right now is single disposables. Single disposables just means the things that we only use one time, like a coffee cup once, and we throw it away. A spoon, we use it once, we throw it away. We go get takeout, we get it, and we throw it away. So what we want to recommend people to do is try to bring, you know, if you go to a restaurant all the time, you know, you're not traveling, some are difficult. It's like, well, how easy it is just to bring some Tupperware, something like a Pyrex glass or something non-toxic, just have them put the food in it. Usually they actually put in sometimes more. And then, you know, you close it, just take it home. And you're not, you remember, you're not having the plastic leach, all the chemicals and all the fluorocarbons and all the, the, the BPA and, and, and xenoestrogens. But these are simple things. You know, bring some cutlery, bring your bottle, you know, bring a, a glass bottle or a canteen kind of uh, to, your, to a conference or to any kind of workshop. Don't sit there and just use plastic water bottles and plastic cups. Just throwing away. Unbelievable how much waste. Once you start sitting there and, and, and look at a big conference room. Or if you have a big party and you say, okay, you know, you throw a party, 4th of July. Think of how much waste this 4th of July you got to go see how much is get thrown away. It doesn't take that long. Put some of the stuff in the recycle bin. Put some things in the compostable bin. Put some things in the, in the, in the garbage bin. Learn. It's not that difficult. If you do that, there's profound effects that can occur. So don't waste the food and don't waste the plastic. Absolutely. So these are simple things. Now, I'm wondering, is Theo still on the line? I am. I'm loving the show. All right. So anything you can say about the plastics or anything else you can say here on our, uh, on this topic of, of yeah. yeah, go ahead. For sure. Yeah. You guys, it's, it's so much fun when you um, shift even slightly in your diet and your awareness and you look at like ways to reduce the use of plastics or packaging. But when you go to a, a primarily whole foods and a primarily plant-based diet, your, your trash production will fall by 50, 60% almost automatically. And then if you're even thoughtful about it, we've been able to reduce our, our output, our trash output by 80%. It takes us several weeks to fill up one of those little rolling trash cans that you wheel out to your right. curb now. Uh, but interesting enough, our recycle side, um, they use a smaller one. And we're able to fill that up with anything else that, that's, that's just outside, you know, that's kind of around it. But even doing something as simple as looking at the blue zones and the way that those folks eat and, and buying your, you know, your food items in greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries and seeds, beans, rice, big salad, fruit that's in season. And then if you're, if you're inclined to eat animal products, you know, eat a much smaller amount. Just that little bit of a transition, you can't believe the measurable impact that you could actually sit with a calculator and figure out um, the, the reduction of, of who you are on the planet. Because remember, when these plastics leave our house, they don't go in the ground and biodegrade. That's, that, was, that was the false misleading thing. We buried them in the ground. They're still there. And now they're becoming microparticulates. And now they're, becoming, they're getting involved everywhere we're seeing in the ocean. But they're, they're there for our kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, great-grandkids, kids. And they're great grandkids, right? This is a forever thing. Yeah, and we, we, we want to make sure that, you know, small things. So again, what you eat on your plate every day. So a lot of people are like, oh, do I need to change to LED bulbs? Yeah, if you can. If it might be expensive. It's worth it, right? Can we get all these other, you know, eco-friendly materials in our home? Yes, but the thing that you do all the time, three, four, five times a day is eat food. So if you make better decisions there, you have a, a larger global impact without having to go out of your way. And people are like, oh, gosh, it's so much. It's so difficult. Everybody tries to have the excuses. But the idea is this. You want to get healthy yourself but you have to also be environmentally healthy. Why? Because at the end of the day, if you are perfectly healthy and you got bad air, bad food, bad water, then you're not going to be healthy pretty soon after that, right? So you want to put your efforts where it's not just affecting you, but it's affecting the environment around you. Yeah, think about the containers that you can take to the uh, 
supermarket and store with you, um, reuse your plastic bags, uh, you know, take baskets, take things with you to the store so you're not just pulling off another plastic bag and throwing it in the trash. You know, some of the some of the plastic bags, right? Some of the grocery markets now actually give you like 10 cents every time you bring a a bag, your own bag. And, you know, I I, we always bring our freezer bags and just throw everything in there. And just it's easy to carry, keeps everything cool. And you just have one big bag, you know, so definitely look at these small little things like looking at using more recyclable cutlery when you buy cutlery, right? Or, or, or bring cutlery to a place, right? If you can. Uh, but this weekend, as everybody's going to have this coming up this 4th of July, you'll see this amount of waste. I hope everybody's enjoying their uh, Independence Day. But hopefully they can look at what are my Independence Day for my great grandchildren will be like. And if they look at what oh, I'm having ice cream, I'm throwing this thing, I'm having a, a, some cookies or candies or cake or something like that, what they can do to actually uh, make a positive change so that they can also celebrate uh, their Independence Day uh, coming soon. So after the short little break, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about, we're going to sum up the show about what you can do at home to make simple changes. And again, summarizing the the global impact, which is so important by doing simple things, eating more whole foods, plant-based diet, eating more local organic foods, and also organizations that you can help support. We'll be right back after the short break. Clear. All right, everybody, here we go. Last round of the show. I hope you are enjoying this. This is like an important topic. We don't. We, a lot of times we don't talk about it because we just don't think about it. We're always worrying about like cholesterol, diabetes, cancer. But uh, what about the uh, the health of the planet? Right. And what about and what about the health of the animals and the environment and places that you want to go vacation or uh, maybe people want to go hiking again somewhere in the future or or um, you know other cultures that are, are dependent on coastal regions or different kind of. Uh, uh, forest regions. And now we're just having it for burgers. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's not a good thing. One of, one of my recent rants is about, you know, stop spraying what we call weeds, because many of those things that we call weeds are some of the no- most nutritious plants that we can eat. There's so let's talk about this on the on the show when it comes back on the on the radio because I really want people to hear that because a lot of people just use pesticides and they're and especially this weekend being you know holiday weekend everybody's trying to clean up the yard right not understanding not understanding they're you know we were told that weeds in their shorts and their flip flops and not even knowing they're spraying Agent Orange all over them themselves and, <laughs> and their lawn and killing off all the birds the birds go to the other yard and and die. What are, what other articles? I know that there's some important things that you wanted to bring up that you were doing some research on. Um, I want to make sure that we cover at least because we have some wonderful topics. I want to make sure we're not missing out. Well, fish in the oceans and also twenty the, seconds. Uh, butterflies and bees. Okay, we'll talk about bees as well. Okay, but I want to I want to definitely everybody. Uh, Please share this on Facebook. Go to sanjevani.net, S-A-N-J-E-V-A-N-I, sanjevani.net, and sign up for our newsletter. We have specials. We have discounts. We have events coming up. You are tuned in to Take Back Your Health. To reach our program today, call 1-866-472-5792. That's 1-866-472-5792. Or by email to radio at sanjevni.net. That's radio at sanjevani.net. Now, let's return to Take Back Your Health. What a great show this has been, you know, talking about food impact and the environment. You know, the amount of waste, 40% of America throws away their food every day, 1,400 calories. Uh, you know, we talked about 7 million coffee cups you know, a day that are just used once and thrown away. Right. Uh, we talked about laws where you can't you can't take the products that they throw out of the supermarket and give them to people who need them. And we have laws to prevent that. That's yeah. There's a few cities that are challenging that, which is rightfully so in the northeast that are look at northwest that are looking at how they can actually have food waste programs where uh, grocery markets. Because right now, like most grocery stores, believe it or not, there's farms that throw away like tw- I was just reading one thing about parsnips like they're throwing. 20 tons of parsnips away because the shapes of the parsnip is not uh, beautiful enough to, to send to a grocery store. 20 tons, right? So, so we see this all the time where we want to look, we want to make these food look like very plastically round, kind of GMO. Everything looks like the same shape, Perfect. you know, you know 
yeah. shiny rather than a nice, you know, plumpy, bumpy heirloom tomato, which is so delicious. Now they want this round GMO, you know, kind of look like plastic fruit. Tastes like plastic fruit, by the way. Um, but the idea is that we have to be careful of understanding that these are really important things that we have to look at getting food as medicine. And our medicine has to be important. Um, and we have to have the the space, the land, the environment. Again, the amount of CO2 footprint is amazing. So if people can look at um, lowering their carbon footprint by recycling, by eating more plant-based foods. Now, this is also affecting the bees, isn't it, Maureen? Yeah, it's definitely affecting the bees. And and we know that, and we have known that. And, you know, when I take a walk with Winnie every morning and I'm looking at all of the beautiful flowers that are out and I'm just noticing that there's hardly any bees left on them. It used to be covered in bees. Now, you know, I'm lucky if I can count five or six bees. So what's happening to our bees is they're spraying uh, seeds of our plants with um, something called neonic and that kills the bees by the millions. One particular farmer said that once they coated the seeds with the neonic and, and planted them, um, how many was that? 37 million. 37 million of just his bees died. That, that is awful. So that's putting a lot of strain. With, uh, obviously, without bees, we're not going to have any food. You yeah. Know, bees are the pollinators. People forget that. They just think, oh, they make honey. I don't eat honey. So I don't really care. I'm like, but every flower, every, everything, how, how things are pollinated. It's just, it's just, it's just, you know, it's, it's amazing to understand that something simple as bees. And so we see here coming this holiday weekend, everybody's spraying like Roundup. You see it all these commercials and people think these are weeds, but you know, most of the things that are growing are not weeds. They actually can be actually edible foods like dandelion, right? It's almost in every, like here in New Mexico, everybody's yard has it. And like, you know, now where people are buying like organic dandy, <laughs> dandelion teas and, and, and we have products in our, in our store here. People buy make, dandelion yeah. greens in your greens health food and, store. And, and this, smoothies. And, and people are just spraying this stuff, right? Stop spraying it. It's free. It's in your lawn and it's, it's helping the bees. It's helping you. It's one of the most valuable things for your liver. And then there's a, a weed, a weed called purslane, which is very, very good for your health. There's goat's heads, which, you know, people are like, oh, those things are terrible. They get in my feet, they get in everything. But those are really, really valuable, um, you know, foods for all of us. There's lamb's ear. There's, there's just so many things that we have selected out at plants that we have selected out as weeds and we spray them that we could be eating. They're just there for us. Right. And, you know, it's because they want to sell you, this is the grass we want you to grow, GMO grass now that's been introduced since 2017 by a Scotch division, Monsanto subsidiary. Okay. And then here's the weed killer that you put on the ready roundup. So it's a vicious cycle. And then here's the plants that we want you to grow, but to grow your own, you know, I, I there's three things I always tell people that threaten governments that threaten pharmaceutical companies, that threaten energy companies, corporations, is growing your own food, growing your own medicine, and then being sustainable in terms of using energy. And if you do those three things, you know, you're not a consumer for them. And so the goal is that, you know, in most of the business economics is how do we get you plugged in so that you can never leave the system? Right. And we want people to grow, you know, grow a little garden in your backyard. You know, there's all these non things on Facebook and the, and the and Internet and Amazons and all these things. You can get to grow little gardens in your backyard and, and in the winter, inside, outside, um, sustainable, like <laughs> growing uh, mechanism machines. I mean, there's even compostable things you can put in your house where, or outside your house as well. that you can say, I'm throwing my waste here and it's going to make the compostable material so I can then sprinkle that as fertilizer and put the little worms in there. All these things are completely available. And that you can create your own pesticides and your own uh, weed killers um, very simply just with like vinegar and essential oil and a little tiny bit of dish soap and spray that on the things that you don't want, you know, growing into your garden. In, so in my, in, 
Yeah, in my book, An Inflammation Nation, we have a little section where we actually have some companies that are they're actually more industrial, like they're larger. So you can make it at home easily, you know, DIY. Uh, but uh, there's other companies that provide it. So if you're using it for offices or, or homes and stuff, and it's all 100% plant-based, there's no chemicals, and you can just spray it. And it's got wonderful essential oils and kills all the insects, but we're not killing the insects around that or killing the pets or killing us uh, in, in between. So these are natural things that you can use very simply. Maybe. Um, study some of the insects that you're so afraid of and understand why they're important in our ecosystem. Like so, butterflies. so we, butterflies are really, really important. All, all the animals are important. And in fact, again, so I, I'm going to bees, then we'll, we, ha we have to take care of the butterflies. So we have to take care of all of them. So I'm recommending everybody today to start this 4th of July, Independence Day. You know, we want to move back the overshoot day, right? We want to keep changing it so that we're using less than the planet can actually uh, replenish. We want to actually replenish more than that planet is actually consuming. We want to be uh, a creditor rather than a debtor. And so we want to support biodiversity. We want to regenerate agricultural using by sustainable agriculture, you know, biodynamic farming, support organic farming, biodynamic farming, how they use actually the pests and the nature all naturally. So they don't have to spray anything. They follow the traditional cycles of real farming. You know, eat if you're really lazy, you can even be armchair activists and work against uh, Monsanto and all of the chemicals that they're spraying on our foods and putting into our seeds. Sign petitions. Uh, we highly recommend get online. There's a lot of things on destruction of EPA and USDA on quality of food, a regulation of food safety and uh, destruction of the environment. And you have to take this personally now because it's no longer, oh, we, someone's going to protect us. No, as we talked about in many shows we before, have we have to do it ourselves. So be active, get online. You know, there's lots of support groups. Environmental Working Group was one. Uh, food Print Network, uh, Footprint Network, that was another one. Uh, tons of other ones just that are, that are listed in my book. Um, you want to stop food waste. So try to only put what food that you want on your plate, especially when you go to a buffet. Okay, every time you're throwing away that food, someone else could eat it and something that was given its life, both plant and animal for you. So you should have some consciousness in thanking that. And also only use, try to use like, avoid the single disposables, right? So try to bring your own culture, you bring water, do that for parties this 4th of July, try to reduce the waste and see just how much you can have an impact. So I really want to thank Theo for calling in. I want to thank Maureen and I for, we want to thank all the listeners out there uh, for, for supporting us. And we hope that this is always providing you information that can really bring you into self-empowerment. We want you to be better prepared, stronger, more educated, and empowered to take back your health. And until next week, again, best of health. Thank you. Let's think about our planet. All right, you're clear. All right, everybody. We're here on Facebook Live. I hope you enjoyed that discussion. Uh, I think Theo is off. I believe they probably took him off because they're coming through the network. But uh, anybody on the anybody on Facebook we want to talk about? Uh, say hi to. Uh, some more weeds, some dill chives. <laughs> dill and chives, delicious. Oh yeah. Um, Claire saying good point. We need to be on our own more. Drought here in northern New Mexico has been hard this year. Our garden is not working, praying for rain. Yeah, we are, you know, we, we definitely, the, the, the drought is all, you know, this climate change is affecting everybody. So it's either going to be super cold or super hot, droughts or, or floods. And that's not helpful for anybody. So we have to do this globally. And, you know, the United States, unfortunately, getting out of the, you know, the whole climate, the, the, the pact, and, and just saying, hey, we don't, we don't care about the environment is, is really um, disruptive for a global effect of improving, you know, since we're the largest contributing factor of the country uh, due to our consumption of what, what, what this crisis is all about. We, we can't put our head in the sand and we can't say, oh, well, we don't care because it's, it's here. Ahead. Do whatever you want. Yeah. No, we can't do that anymore. It's the same air that we breathe, the same food, and the food is running out. You know, in fact, like in our office here, we're going to slowly switch over to uh, a plant-based omega-3. It's sustainable. I've been working on a project for two weeks, uh, two years. You can read about my book, but um, we're looking at how, you know, even though we have sustainable fishing practices in certain companies, most, if not all, uh, you know, fish 
is not, you know that's a fish oil or uh, those kind of supplements are not sustainably harvested, and so it's just putting in this amount of strain that's dredging the oceans and and bottom feeders, and also then the fake food industry that we talked about the last couple of shows how the deception of now there's so much fake food that's being put in especially seafood and mislabeled seafood so the idea is that you know moving to more sustainable uh sources of that and even more so eating better then i don't have to take the supplement right so mm -hmm. the goals are you know the pictures that you see here the people who can watch it at home uh you know this, this is what you should be eating a whole foods plant-based diet we can't stress enough this holiday eat one less burger per week or two less burgers per week you don't have to worry about driving a green car you got to help the environment so much better and help to influence your family members and your friends. So when you go to visit them this weekend, your family and friends, take some of this information with you and talk, talk to them about it. This is really important for the survival of the human species. So and how, and how easy is it just to separate? Like when you're throwing away at the end of watching the game, playing football or, you know, watching a movie together this 4th of July, just say, okay, the plastic goes in here, the cardboard goes in this tra no, two trash cans and then take it to the curb. I mean, is it that difficult? Can we not just do that simple aspect and try to not just have everybody, you know, take a cup, use it and throw it away. Like why don't you just have it and then wash it. It's actually less harmful to wash your dishes than to just keep using plastic. And everybody's going to go, I know, to the, the, the big box stores and buy, you know, all these plastic plates and I'll try to spend a little bit more than get some recyclable plates. So if you are going to throw it away, guess what? With that food or whatever you're throwing away, hopefully that will biodegrade and that will be safer for the environment. And think about the styrofoam plates and cups that you're using. What are they made out of? They're made out of petroleum. And so you're putting your food on that and hot beverages in that. And then you're drinking it. You are getting that petroleum, those particles into your system. All the all the PCBs, all the, you know, the fluorocarbons, all the um xenoestrogens so yes the the coffee cups especially the styrofoam ones which we get every kind of hospital or clinic you know or, or you know a lot of t t you know regular uh, workplaces just you know right near the water cooler there's people just drink it throw it away it's probably one of the worst health things and also the worst things that we just throw away is just coffee cups again i think seven what is it seven million seven million a day i can't imagine that right so try to throw away less food eat you know, what's only appropriate for you. Don't think that this is just because it's all you can eat that you can just put anything on your plate and throw away. That's actually just, just bad advice. And I think that's just selfishness. I think a lot of people say, well, I can, I paid for it. I can eat it. Well, I actually didn't pay for it. It's been subsidized by the taxpayer's money. That's where all this stuff goes from, from the corn and the beef and the, and the factory farming. It's all subsidized for everybody. So that's why food is cheap, but it shouldn't be cheap. We should be paying for higher quality produce, just like your food is medicine and don't make it your poison because they're making it your poison. Yeah. And, ma and maybe some of these ideas too, you can incorporate with your small children and make it something fun so that, you know, they're, they're helping you to separate the plastics and the aluminums and those sort of things for recycling and help them to understand why they're doing it. And it's so important because like, for example, when you use medicines, like for example, uh, with CBD, like just recently this week, it was approved, right? By FDA, uh, GW Pharmaceuticals has Epidolux now by prescription, but is it organic? You know, does it have, is it sprayed with chemicals? I mean, it's a crop. It, does, is pharmaceutical kind of going to say know anything about it? We're, we're, we're going to, no, they don't care. They're making it to, uh, we're synthesizing it, putting a, you know, a patent on it, and we're just going to give it. Is it organic? I haven't really seen that, whether it is or not. It doesn't say it is. But, you know, when we use something like, you know, like a Five Vita, uh, you know, we have offering here, it's all organic certified. We look at all the pesticides, herbicides, and there's hundreds of them. So there's not just like, oh, we just check for E. coli and some heavy metals. Like when we do certificate analysis, we look at everything. So these are important things that people have to look at. The food is medicine. Now that we're making some foods into medicine, like the turmeric and all these things like our bosmeric, how is that process is so unique versus other companies' products? So these are so your food itself and your supplements, you have to look at what, what's that global impact of what they're using using and how's that affecting you and the environment oh by the way we ask our patients when they have finished with their supplement bottles to bring them back to us so that we can recycle them yes another good idea so you so which so for those who see so yeah, a, a natural health provider a chiropractor md uh you know naturopath and anybody who's got supplements you should ask them say hey you know if they can put a bin in their office and say hey 
incentivize the patients to come and then drop off their bottles and then have the, the, the clinic uh, recycle. That's a great way to show your support and get other people because everybody's going to go to a store, right? And we're always looking at, well, this is, you know, because always we have family members coming in like, this is what my wife's taking or this is what my husband's taking. Or, I got this last time. I can't remember. So have them bring it in and, you know, everybody's happy because we get the right product and then we're recycling. So we're, we're taking a little bit off of their hands as well. But simple things make it easy for children not, like maureen said make it a fun thing to do that after you finish your food try not to throw it away as much as you can and then try to recycle as much of things as you can and take you know use leftovers and 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 use the the dishes that you can uh use over again uh, without just throwing them away and repurpose things you know so even the little supplement bottles you can repurpose them for all kinds of little knickknacks that end up in your junk drawer and then you can start to organize things so oh there's so on the on the internet there's so many hacks right of what to do with bottles and cans and and boxes it's, it's quite amazing Art, I was... mosaics there's so many things that you can do right so so everybody you know these are extra things that again Every time you do that, it's a, it's a small but large and profound impact to the environment. And we want this beautiful Mother Earth to be for everyone, uh, not just for some of the few elite that think that they have uh, their way and they'll get away from everything. But it's going to affect them, too, because they still have to use the same land, water, food, and people like us to be around to help them when they get ill. So. Anyways, I, I think this is a, a good show. I Hopefully, you will share this with everybody. Go to Sangevity.net, sign up for our newsletter, and please like us on Facebook. Go to House of Sangevity. That's House, H-O-U-S, of Sangevity, spelled S-A-N-J-E-V-A-N-I. Please go to that um, page and please click like. Uh, we're trying to get as many likes so that we can bring in some high top guests who require us to have so many people before they do an interview. And we want to share as much interv uh, interview information with everybody who's listening. And be kind to yourselves and the planet. Thank you. Have All right, a wonderful every Fourth of July weekend. Everybody have a wonderful Fourth of July. Remember why we came for independence who we came from independence from. We all were immigrants on some level. Remember that unless you're a Native American, uh, then uh, yes, we all should be thankful and welcome people and uh, treat people with respect and with love. Until next time again, best of health and thanks for listening. Thank you.